we know that atrial flutter actually forms a re-entry loop kind of isolated in the right atrium. And the reason for this is that there's some conductive tissue issues in the right atrium. Different tissues tend to either conduct faster or slower. This re-entry circuit tends to follow a predictable pattern because of the anatomical differences in the right atrium. And that means that we tend to get an atrial rate around 300 beats per minute. Now, how this manifests on the 12 lead, we actually get these nice flutter waves, often referred to as F waves. And this whole rotation, starting from the SA node as the impulse comes down the right atrium and then back up, actually is referred to as an anti-clockwise A flutter re-entry. So what ends up happening in this situation is that anti-clockwise rotation of that 300 beats per minute actually does get conducted down into the AV node. But the AV node, in order to protect the heart to allow for ventricular filling, the AV node will actually terminate some of those impulses. So oftentimes the AV node will kind of form a little bit of a blockade because the AV node knows that the ventricles cannot sustain 300 beats per minute. And more often than not, the most common form of atrial flutter is for every two impulses that the atria sends down to the AV node. The AV node actually blocks one and allows one to go through, which means that from the atrial rate, our ventricular rate is cut in half. And this is referred to as a two to one conduction, which means that our ventricular rate is often 150. And this is kind of the reason why atrial flutter is so often missed because at that cutoff rate of 150, kind of depends, our P waves tend to begin to get obscured in the 12 lead. And so I wanna show an example of this. We have in this 12 lead, a very nice ventricular rate of 150. And what I wanna draw your attention to is lead two at the bottom. I wanna show how these T waves are lining up almost perfectly in the middle between QRS complexes. This is kind of your first clue that you may be dealing with an atrial flutter of two to one conduction. We have T waves that line up perfectly in the middle between QRS complexes. And you also notice we have these small blips just behind the QRS complexes. Now, what I wanna do is map out from blip to T wave and show that they map out perfectly, perfectly in line with one another. And so what's actually happening in this situation is that you are getting buried P waves in the T waves. This phenomenon where the T waves are burying P waves actually has a name and it's known as the Bix rule. And it is exclusive to the two to one conduction in atrial flutter.